Hi and welcome back. Um, so um, today what we're going to be doing is um, a new project um, and we're going to be learning all about the wall tool mostly. Um, of course we'll um, learn a few things um, along the way as well. So I'm just going to set up a, um, a new project using the ArchiCAD 23 template um, but this time I'm going to use the, um, the last profile used um, which should um, keep all of the palettes that I had active in my last um, session. So that includes the um, control and coordinates palette and the quick layers. Um, if they're not there, you can go up here and go palettes, coordinates, control and quick layers. Alright, as this is the, um, the ArchiCAD 23 template, you'll notice that we've got um, all of the default things of that um, template. Um, and including in that is also that the, the grid switched off. So let's switch the grid back on again. That way we can actually see if when we're zooming in and out, it makes life a lot easier. We have got these elevations. Um, you can actually delete pretty much everything except for one layout I think it likes to keep. Um, um, and don't be afraid to do so. In fact, if you go and do a new project um, and you just say latest project settings, you'll get um, a, basically a blank project without anything um, added to it. But you will actually get the last lot of layers that you use, which is actually quite convenient. All right. Um, so yes, yeah, so as I said, we're going to do mostly tools, uh, mostly the wall tool today, um, and I'm going to go through how you can um, use the wall tool, some of the settings, some of the gotchas, and um, and some cool stuff. So first of all, um, let's just um, go in here. And so if, um, this is my project origin. Okay. So if you notice there, that the X and Y is zero um, when I start from there. So I'm going to start drawing from there, and I'm going to start drawing just a normal straight line. So if I click on there. You'll notice that I can draw a straight line out. Now notice the distance. Okay, so if I go and click there, I'm going to get a wall of 17,261 millimeters, which is not going to look great on um, a dimensioned plan. So um, I could go in there and type in a distance by pressing D on my keyboard and then going, let's say, 20 um, meters. Okay, or I'm just going to hit escape. Okay, see, I'm still, still defining a wall. Um, I can just go up here and switch on my snap grid. Um, and it's going to snap to this either this coarse grid or my snap grid, which is um, currently set to 50 mil increments, which means at least I will get numbers that um, look a lot better than um, the oddities I was getting before. All right, so I'm just going to use the snap grid, the two meter grid, and I'm just going to draw um, a, a building. Now note, when I drew that, I drew a single vector. Okay, so the vector um, in this case, I'm only defining two points: the start point with one click, and the end point with a second click. Okay, um, now that vector, as you can see here, is this dark blue line. I'm just going to delete that one for a second. Um, we're going to go up here and go View On Screen View Options and turn the wall and beam reference lines on. Okay, you don't have to have this on all the time, um, but it does help sort of you know, decode your drawing. Um, you can actually see not only um, the vector line here, but you can also see the direction I drew it in. Okay, so if I go and draw another one from this side to this side, you'll see that it's got um, the arrow going in that direction. This is really important because if I go like this, for example, and like this, um, some really weird things are happening. You can see that all of these lines are going fine, except for this one is on the wrong side. And if I go and switch this from outside to inside, um, you watch what happens. So here's our outside. Okay, so I can say um, I want actually the core inside. Um, now that one's inside, but the rest of these are outside. Okay, which is a bit weird. So let's just talk about this. So this is the reference line. I'm just going to get undo on that. Really, what I wanted to do was this should have been drawn around the other way. So I really need the vector to be going in that way. And yes, I could delete it and start again. But we have actually got controls over the reference line. So I can modify this reference line. So um, if the wall was in fact meant to be in the other direction, um, all I actually want to do is, um, is switch the direction. In fact, I can do it quite easily like this. Okay. So now it's going to flip that to the other side. Still not really what I wanted to do. Um, so let's just see here. Oh, that's my dog knocking its head against the table. <laughs> um, so uh, we've got core outside, and if we go and change this, so that's core outside. 
but we need to flip the direction. So we actually need the um, the line to go in the opposite direction. So we just go reference line, and we're going to invert the wall direction. Okay, so now it's going in the correct direction, and now we need to flip it. So if I go and say um, flip it, bam, there we go. And so now we can see it's all going around the way, same way. That's the outside, and that's still outside, and it all goes around it in a nice logical manner. You can do some pretty cool stuff with this. So if it's a case of, well, actually, that is how long that wall is meant to be because I'd measured, I don't know, an inside dimension, something crazy, I don't know. Um, I could actually move the reference line to the other side as well. So we can do that by going to the reference line, modify the reference line, and I can say, edit the reference line, and I want that um, on the core outside. Oops, sorry. Let's do that core inside because it's all a bit crazy at the moment, isn't it? Da, 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 da. Okay, and so notice, see how I'm going to get undo. See, see what it's done is it's actually moved the reference line to that side. All right. And we've got core inside and then the rest of these are core outside. So a little bit weird, anyway. Um, I'm just going to delete all that. Yeah, let's just zoom out again. So that's the reference line. Um, all right, so we've talked about doing single lines, but what other options have we got? Well, we can do a polyline, and a polyline is just a whole bunch of single vectors all joined together. So instead of defining beginning, end, beginning, end, beginning, end, I'm just defining the next point. Okay. Notice I'm getting all this nice heads up display so I can kind of see exactly where things are all lining up with. We've got all of our reference lines, so this would be relevant if I had measured the building from the outside of the building and I wanted the walls to appear on the inside. Um, if that's not what I intended, um, I can flip that to core inside. There we go. And so now this would be like as if I measured a room from the interior and I'm sticking the walls on the exterior. Alright, actually there is one other thing we need to talk about with reference lines. So let's say I wanted to split this room. So I'm going to make this into a room, okay? Now, um, let's just say we've got a wall running through here. Cool. Now just make sure that these reference lines are all joining up in the way that they're meant to. Okay, so that's good. That's all meeting. This one is meeting as well. Cool. So you always want to make sure that these things meet correctly. Um, if I want to split this into two halves, right, if I just grab the wall tool and I hover over here, so this is using um, this little control here, so if these little tick marks aren't showing up, you might just have to switch that off. Uh, so sorry, switch that on. Um, and then just make sure that this is set to half, okay? So when I hover over here, we should see a little tick mark appear. Now this can be problematic if you've got the snap grid on, so I'm just going to turn the snap grid off. Okay, and... Why can't I see the halfway point? Halfway. I'm on a wall. Oh, I just want to do a single wall as well. Not that it really matters. Oh, I'm still snapping to the grid. What's going on there? There we go. There's that snap grid. Now, no, see when I go and do this, so even though it's splitting in half, what I've actually done is that this room will be slightly larger than this room. And that's because you can see that this wall is appearing on the right hand side of the line. To split this perfectly in half, it would have to be centered. So in this case, we're going to do core center. Okay. Now notice there is a little bit, see it's centering the core. Um, that's because this is a, um, a composite wall. So it's actually got an outside edge. So we're not really using the right one. Um, you'll actually notice if I go centered, it's going to center the wall, so this would be exactly the same, otherwise it's going to center the core, and then this has got, I know, some sort of facing on it, so it looks like this has got like jib or something. Not the best option that we've got. Probably in this case I would want to change this to a stud partition. Okay. Alright, so these are my outside walls, um, and these are my interior walls. Now I have got another little thing here I should have been doing. So from our last tutorial, I said that you should be thinking about what are you going to draw and what layer are you going to put it on. So let's just create some layers here, okay? So I'm just going to go through and create some new layers. So I'm going to call this int walls or interior walls. 
cool. Um, and I'm also going to call this one, um, sorry, exterior walls. Actually, now it's easier. If I go walls, exterior, then that will be grouped together, see, because it's alphabetical. Um, and we'll just rename int walls, walls, int. Okay. So these walls here should be interior walls, see? So walls int. Um, and while I've got them both selected, I'm going to change them to stud partition. Ah, that's interesting. Didn't change. So what I want to do, actually this is a good little segue. I'm going to show you the eyedropper and the injection thing here. So if I hold down the option key, or if I click on this, I can suck the settings out of this, and then I can either go and hold down um, option and command in my case, I think on the um, PC it's option control. See it turns into an, a little syringe, okay? or I can go up here and hit the syringe and inject the settings into this one. Very convenient. However, this isn't correct because look, okay, so this one here we would need to set to, I think it's the outside first, yeah. Okay, so now we've defined the outside of that wall, lines up perfectly, these two are sp split nicely, and everything looks lovely all right okay so let's have a little look here in the wall settings okay so this here is just a subset of everything that's in here um there is a few little subtle differences but i'm not going to go into that but basically if you go in here you can see all the differences so for one and this is the number one question i always get is why can't i change the wall thickness the wall thickness is grayed out see that i can't change it um, and that's because we're on a composite wall. This didn't used to be the default in ArchiCAD, it used to always be on just a standard generic wall. Um, what do they call it? Basic. Okay, but the composite wall is actually a whole predefined set of fills and thicknesses and materials. So these are really cool. Um, whereas these generic walls, we can set the thickness to whatever we like, um, and it, you'll actually see it's got like a whole bunch of presets in here as well for um, the fills. Okay, so maybe we want to have, I don't know, a concrete wall. Okay, and it's got all the presets and we can say, cool, it's actually 120. And you can change the thickness. So if you can't change the thickness and you're wanting to, that's what's going on. Um, especially for like concrete walls and things like that. However, these composite, and I'm not going to go into the details of this in this session, but if we actually go into um, options, element attributes, composites, you can actually see these um, settings. So here's the stud partition, and you can actually see here's all the fills and everything that it's using um, to create this stud partition. Okay, so you can see here it's got that, and it's got 12 millimeters, and 76 millimeters, and then another 12 millimeters for a total of 100. So if I wanted to go to 120, I'd obviously have to change these numbers. Um, to get up to that 120. So if I go and change that to 196, oh sorry, to 96, that would be a 120 mil. Uh, you can also see that this can be applied to um, walls, slabs, roofs, and um, the, what's that one, the, the shells. Um, okay, but yeah, we will do a session on this at a later stage. I'm just going to cancel that for now. Okay, so, um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. Where are we? Let's go to the walls. Um, this one here is um, profiled walls, and these are really cool. Um, so we can actually set up like curved walls. There used to be a lot more presets in here, but anyway. Um, so we can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, actually, I'll just show you this one here. Um, so you can see that it's got um, a whole bunch of variables. In fact, there's a whole bunch that get assigned to it as well. So it's got footing width. So we can actually change the footing width, which if you hover over this, you can kind of see it's got like this footing width here. Um, but we can also define where it stretches, so we could make it so it's editable, so that when we adjust the width, um, it adjusts um, you know, certain parts of this model. So maybe this red wall, if you adjust the width, that gets wider. Um, or maybe this bit gets taller when you adjust the height, but the base stays the same height. Um, you can see that when you go and set the height of this, it will be set here, so if I set it at zero, the concrete will go down, the rest of it will go up. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in here. Um, and again, we'll have to do this in another session um, on profiled walls. 
um, but you can actually see that this profile manager is where all of those settings are stored okay and again they can be um, attached to all sorts of different things like beams and um, columns and all sorts of crazy stuff okay um, so we've just been doing just you know, normal straight walls you can have a wall that gets thicker at one end than the other so if I go and set this to 500 um, and I'm just doing generic structural when I go and click this you can see it get, goes from a thin wall to a thick wall so that'll be quite good for connecting two walls together undo that we've also got in here um, where are we um, oh this one's really odd and I don't know why you'll notice that you can only choose this from um, the basic wall um, and you can create a wall that just has some sort of crazy structure to it I don't know why but anyway we can create oddly shaped walls I suppose it'd be quite good for cavities or something maybe I don't know um, if you've got good reasons to use that wall actually post a little comment down below um, right, let's go back into these wall settings. Is there anything else I want to talk about? So we talked about reference lines. Oh, we've also got the ability to put these at an angle. So, so we can do like a, an, uh, you know, a wall at an angle. And what's really cool is that it will actually join these up. So if I go into the 3D view now. Um, let's have a little bit of a look around. Now, huh, interesting, isn't it? it's not there what's going on that's because the layer switched off so if I go command L you'll actually notice that walls exterior and walls internal are switched off by default it seems to save um, the layers um, for the 3d view and because I created these layers um, by default it leaves them switched off so if I switch them on bam you can see there's our interior walls and there's these other walls over here Okay, and you can see that this wall here, even though it's on an angle, still um, joins. And even if you put this this one at a at a crazy different angle, right? So let's say we said, um, and here, so let's say this one was 120. <laughs> this will probably break it. Let's go. Let's go 80. Oops. Okay. See, so that's at 50. That's at 80. It still joins. So it works that all out. Let's do 120. I, I don't know what will happen. Oh, yeah, it does still work. I thought that might break, but no. So it's pretty clever. Okay, so we've got these two angled walls and it's joining up nicely. And if we go and edit this wall, okay, so we can um, move the end point, it will still try and join it up. You will get to the point where you design yourself into a hole. So you can kind of see there that it's like chopping off the top of the other wall. Anyway. Let's just undo that, and we're just going to go back to the 2D view. Okay. Um, actually, while we're here, so we haven't actually set these to the exterior walls, right? This is a little trick that I usually do. So if we just bring up the layers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select all, um, go hide, and I'm just going to hide um, the... Oh, sorry, deselect all. Um, so remember, what does it, it all end up on? Structural bearing, I think. Okay. So if we switch that layer on, um, we're only seeing what's on the structural bearing layer. So I can say, ah, all of these walls should have been on the external walls layer. So now if I select all of these walls, and I go external walls, they should disappear. And I now know that everything's been taken care of. Um, so I can go select all show again. Cool, and we're away. So now I know these ones are on the external walls and these ones are on the internal walls. Okay. So I quite often do that as I just switch the layer off um, that I'm wanting things to appear on. And if anything's still there, you can just put them onto the layer and they'll disappear. And then you know you've got everything all sorted. Okay. Let's have a talk about the heights. So if you're on one of these one, uh, sorry, if you're on um, actually any of these, um, you'll notice that the height here says zero and it's got top link that says story home plus one So what that means is that this um, Wall which is on this on this ground floor is linked to the story above it Okay, so the, the home floor is the floor that this was drawn on and you can actually see 
down here, I believe. Somewhere. It actually says the home floor somewhere. Show plan projected. Oh, maybe not. Um, it's got which ones it's showing on. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Right here. Home story is the ground floor, which is the current floor. Okay. So it's going to be going from the home floor or the home story um, to the next story up. And there's without any deviation. That means that this wall goes all the way to the to the next story. Which, if I go to the 3D view, um, let's just frame this. If I go and lift up this story, so if I go, I'm just going to select this one one of these stories and go settings. Um, so let's say it was, we'll go dramatic five meters to the next floor. All of my walls get higher. Okay. In fact, let's go to this story here, and I'm going to drop. Ah, huh, interesting. We can't actually see what's beneath us. Okay, so here's the ground floor, and here's the next floor up. Now I could actually say, um, well, make these. Um, if I go in here, see, I can actually say, um, show on stories. And I could say all relevant stories, which means if it actually was tall enough, if it went over this height. Okay, so if I said a hundred. Okay, so it's actually going 100 mil into the next floor. If I go up here, you'll actually see them now. Okay. However, that's not really what I want to do. And I'll tell you why. What for one, <laughs> they don't go 100 mil into the next floor. Um, okay, so let's, I'm just going to select these again. Um, let's bring up its settings. Um, dum, 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 all relevant stories. Okay, I could say on all, oh, sorry, home story all, sorry, where is it? Floor plan display projected. Oh, show projection. We go. So I could say um, to absolute display limit. Okay, and then if I go up, we well, still don't see it. <laughs> Undo that. Sorry. I'm actually. I don't think there is a way that I can actually do this the wrong way. I thought I could actually say project. Oh, that's where it cuts through. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is we can also go here and go view. Actually, no, I'm pretty certain. I, I'm a big believer, learn by other people's mistakes. Um, I'm pretty certain I can actually say that it is visible on all stories. But where do I set that? Show on stories or relevant stories. Home story only. I, was, I could have sworn it had um, all stories on there, but anyway. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this one up here, and I'm going to go up to view, and I'm going to turn on the trace. Okay, so when I do that, I can actually see um, by default it's set to the floor beneath. So if I go up another story, it disappears. Okay. Um, so I can now go through and draw a slab. Now remember, I've got to make the slab actually go to the outside of this. If I go to the inside, it's going to be a little bit weird. Um, so let's actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do it to the inside, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I just magic wand it by holding down the space bar. Um, but if I go to the 3D view now, so we've got F3. Um, oh, for one, my floor doesn't go over the right thing, and you can see here. There's a gap now um, between one floor and the next. Um, if I want this to go all the way out to the outside, um, I can just go and grab these points, or I could offset that edge, and I can just snap it to there. Cool. And now, if I go for a little bit of a walk. Oh, hang on, I must have missed that. Snap that. There we go. Okay, so it's snapping. You can actually see when you go into um, adjust these, you'll actually see see how the, the pencil changes color. See, there's, there's no line in it now. When I hover over here, it's going to snap to a reference line or just an edge. Cool. And so we can actually get this. If I go onto this. Cool, and now it actually goes to the outside of the wall. Okay, so I can do that. I could have actually done all of them at the same time. In fact, let's do this from the 2D view. So, you can see I've, I have fixed it there, but I'm going to go undo, undo. Cool, go back to the 2D view. 
Okay, so if I just um, grab this, I'm going to actually go and offset all edges. Cool, and I can offset it all the way out to here or to here. You can see it's wanted to snap like that. Bam. Cool. Okay, I can add to this. So if I go and click on this little here, I can go, I want to add this shape. Um, I can even, even while I'm in the middle of doing something, I can go and add it to there. Actually, maybe I should have oh, do it to there. Cool, I can offset that edge. Can offset it to there. Okay, I'm sure there's better ways of drawing that. I quite often actually start off with the base and then build the walls on top of the base, which would have made a lot more sense. You could just magic wand it to the outside of the walls. Um, there are some oddities going here, so this would be more like as if I had measured the inside of a building and then drawn the walls around the outside. Um, if you were designing from scratch, you would probably start from the outside and work your way in. Totally up to you. Um, Alright, so... Um, now when we go to our 3D view, we've got a lovely 3D view. We can actually copy and paste this, because you watch this. If I just go to here, okay, if I go walls, I'm going to go walls, select all. Oh, sorry, make sure we're on the ground floor. Select all. So I've selected all, oops, walls, select all. So I've selected all walls. Copy, so Command-C or Control-C. Go up a story, go paste. Um, I could move it now if I wanted to, but I don't. So I'm just going to click outside, or I can even hit the OK button. And then I go, oops. Going to the 3D view, you can see I've got another floor. So here's one floor and here's the other floor. Now because our heights are attached to the story settings, that means if I go into here and I change this back to 3000, okay, everything moved down including the floor because the floor by default is also attached to the story okay now you can actually offset this so for example I'm going to go and suspend my group so let's say I don't know why but this wall here for some reason there's going to be a big gap okay it's only a half wall or something for some reason I don't know why if I click on here um, I can see here I can go cool well this it's actually going to be minus 500. Okay, and so that will go now 500 mil down from the story. Okay, which looks kind of interesting. Um, and if I was to lift the story up, that gap would stay the same because it's 500 mil always from there. All right. What else can we do? Um, let's um, bring up these wall settings again. Let's just see if I've missed anything. I think we've gone through all that. We've gone through all the heights. Oh, we can say not linked. So if we said not linked, then we can actually set the height of the wall, which is another big question I obviously get, is how come I can't change the height of my wall? Okay, so you go in here, you can say not linked, um, and I want it to be 500. Cool, and okay. Sweet, and there's my little bit of wall. We can also delete it. Okay, let's go to our 2D view. Is there anything else that we've missed? Um, so, um, this this is called the pet palette, by the way. Um, so, just to reiterate this, remember we can edit each of these walls individually by suspending the groups. Okay, I'm sure it's up here somewhere as well. <laughs> But as I've said before, I get very used to using um, keyboard shortcuts and those two palettes. Um, so here we can suspend the groups. Um, auto grouping just means that when we go and draw those walls, it'll automatically group them together when we're done. When we do a poly wall. Um, oh, now we also have yep, the ability to do square walls. So we can go in here and say, define the bottom left corner and the top right corner. Or well, any direction you like, really. Um, we can also do um, an X and Y, so if we know that the wall or the room um, is you know, D3000, cool, hit enter, and then we go up in this direction, D5000, cool, and it, now we know that the outside of this, okay, because it's set to outside face, 3 meters by 5 meters. 
Um, we can do a lot of um, other little handy things in here, so we can trim um, if we hold down the command key. So if this was kind of the outline, but I didn't obviously want these walls in here, I can just, um, oh, notice, it's, we're trying to trim something that is part of a group. So we could ungroup them, or we can just suspend our groups. I really wish a lot of programs had the suspend groups thing, because it's so good. Um, it sucks when you have to ungroup a whole bunch of stuff, change things, and then group them all back together again. Um, with this you can just suspend the groups, you see. And then as soon as I go and put the groups back on again, they will act as if they were one unit again. Okay, I can actually, see, so this was drawn as one and this is drawn as the other, but if I wanted to, I could select both of those, go Command G or Control G on the PC, and now they're all one group. Awesome. Okay, I can grab that whole lot. I can cut that. I can go up to this story. Did we put walls up there? We did, didn't we? Okay, let's go up to the story and go paste. Um, I'm going to move this onto this roof and go function F3 and fit to view and we've now got this happening cool, I can grab that go copy go to the story go based oops alright go copy go over here, go paste there we go, go F3 Bam, we've got a ceiling in place. Obviously I should have been really thinking about layers and textures and all the rest of it. Oh look, we still need one down there as well. Let's go to the ground floor. Go paste, because I've still got it copied. Cool. Oops, <laughs> wrong keyboard shortcut. Okay, now we've got a completely closed in unit. Alright, what do we see inside here? That looks terrible. <laughs> Alright. Um, I think we're going to leave it at that. Have we? Oh, we've got, I mean the rest is pretty self-explanatory to be honest. Um, yeah, we've got circular walls, so we can define the centre. Um, a radius, so I, can, I can put a number in there. Oh. Um, I can define where that arc's going to finish, or if I click on the same point, it'll make a complete circle. We've also got one where we can actually fit a circle into three points. So if I wanted a circle to go um, inside this space in here, um, and I want it to touch, I don't know, let's say it's going to touch this, this, and this point. Okay, I'll go all the way through. Hang on. In fact, this next one's even better. I think so I can go this this and this cool so you say it's going to fit perfectly inside there okay um, and then the outside and I can just go oops let's suspend our groups I'm going to trim that off trim that off cool and I don't know why this does seem like an odd wall remember if it's on the wrong side I could have just so I select these two, and I can flip that to inside face, bam, look at that. I've got a nice little coving on the corner of my, my room there that actually rotates around this point here, somehow. Isn't that awesome? So if that kept going around it would it'd form a perfect circle. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, that's the other ones that we saw, that's a weird poly wall. Okay, don't know why. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Awesome. If you've got any questions, um, just yeah, fire a comment down below. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next session.